balanced job box. So, we saw before those R of n bounds, right? R of n is greater than or equal to d, but there is no real lower bound. X of n is less than or equal to 1 over d max, right? At, uh, but then what is the corresponding, right? Um, um, bound on the other side. So, that is was what was attempted to solve, uh, I guess this back in the 70s or early 80s, to with the help of this so called balanced job bonds, for which I had to flip back right a few pages. Okay. So, what is a balanced job system, right? So, there is a definition for that. So, a system with technically no bottleneck device, there is kind of a, where all the demands are equal, right? A system where all demands are equal, right, for all the all the devices. This is a balanced. That is the definition. So, all the d's are equal, d i's are equal. Therefore, there is no single bottleneck device, basically, all devices are bottlenecks, right. Whereas, if there is one device which has d max, then that tends to be your the one that dictates your throughput, right. Okay. So, consider, right. This is a system where there is no terminals, right? only your CPU disks and so on. Okay. This is your central subsystem as you call. So, let us not get look at. So, there are m devices in this queue and the total demand is d, right. Remember d was sigma d i and therefore, d i equals d by m for all i. So, we now remember our R i of n, right. So, R i of n is basically S i into right. This is from before, where if there are in the ith queue, if there are n minus 1 customers already waiting, then the demand that the response time for the um, nth job is just this one, right. We have seen this before, okay. So, since all the queues are equal. So, since the all the demands are equal, the expectation is that all the q lengths will be the same. So, q of is simply where q of j is the total number of jobs in the central subsystem. So, now R of n is R i of n into d i. Right. 
right this we know from before this again we write this as V i into So, this is our R i right S i into 1 plus S i q n minus 1 by m and V i S i is our D i. So, that is that and this is now equal to remember D i is defined as D by m right. So, this is So, since uh, there is no need for i anymore here simply multiply this whole thing by m right. So, this is d into 1 plus q n minus 1 by this is your r of m right. So, for a balanced system r of n equals d into 1 plus q n minus 1 divided by m which we can again expand this as d plus d by m into q n minus 1. Okay, that is our step 1. This is a long derivation. Okay. So, this is part 1 out of the 4 steps. Okay. So, this is fair enough. So, now let us assume that. So, here we have a shared system, right? There is a central subsystem that is shared among these n users in the system. So, let us look at a system where let each user have. So, there is no queuing as such here anymore. I am giving like a PC that is given to every n each of the n users right in the system total of n users out of which I am giving each user their own system. <coughs> okay. So, there is no queuing here right this is like a 0 queuing system because there everybody has their own system. So, what is the total time spent? So, this user spends d times right d in the in your central subsystem this is your CPU plus uh, right CPU plus disks and then Z in your uh, terminal right. So, there is saw that D is a total demand made by this any job on the entire system. So, therefore, D and then Z right. So, therefore, if you look at this each user has a probability So, the of being in the central subsystem that is equal to. So, what is the probability that a given user will be in the central subsystem? Either you are in the central subsystem running the computation or you are in the terminal subsystem where you are simply processing an idling, right. So, what is the probability d by Total time right is D here, Z there, therefore, the given probability is just that. 
So, then if you look at our uh, original definition right. So, as we have a system with n users out of which some of the users are in the central subsystem others are in the terminal subsystem right. So, the total number of users in the central subsystem is given by your q of n right q of n is the sum of all the device queues. So, therefore, the total number of users in the central sub the queue basically for processing either disk or CPU is q of n ok. So, now so q of n by n so out of the n users q of n are in the terminals or are in the central subsystem the others are in the terminals terminals where there is no processing simply right this is delay center. So, q by n q of n by n represents what probability that the user is in the central subsystem right out of the n users q of n are in the central subsystem the remaining are in your terminal subsystem. So, q n by n is the probability that that a, that a job right or is in the central subsystem in the original system in the original shared system. The original system q of n by n is the probability that the given job will be in the central subsystem. So, which will be more this one or that one this is the probability when you have nobody else sharing your system right. So, the probability for queuing will be more in the other system right the probability that here there is no queuing at all. So, the probability this therefore q 1 by n should be greater than or equal to right. So, one system with queuing one system with without any queuing right and therefore, this should be your lower bound we have to be at least as large as that depending on the value of n when is very small n equals 1 then there is of course, no queuing in the system too n becomes larger than the probability that you are going to be queued is larger. Therefore, the probability of being in the central subsystem is greater than the probability that you will have in a system where you have your own unique system assigned to you. Okay, so, that is part A. So, then we will go to part B. So, now we say that instead of having every user having their own system, they, we, they still have the same system, but it is n times slower than the original system. So, the capacity of this new system that I am so this is one kind of system right this gives you this bound. We look at a different kind of system where every user has their own individual system, but that is n times slower. Therefore, the effective capacity is same as the original system ok. So, let each user means each device service time s of i right is going to be n s i in the new system right that is what it means by being n times slower. If I had s i service unit s i service time in a particular device in the original system the new system I have n into s i as the service time that is what I mean right. So, therefore, what happens if your d i d i is now n into s i into v i. So, therefore, all the d i's become multiplied by a factor of n right. So, therefore, right. So, all the so the d i is become d i dash becomes n into d i right in this new system because each device is n times slower and therefore, s i is also slower and but your v i is does not change right the number of visits to every device stays the same therefore, it should be n times right. So, the total time taken to process will be n times the original time that is what right ok. So, therefore, time in the CSS equals n into d. So, what is the probability that a job will be in in 
the central subsystem is N D by N D plus Z. N D is time spent in the central subsystem Z for um, terminal processing. So, therefore, this is another bound for the same probability of finding a job in the central subsystem compared to the original subsystem. Okay. So, will the for the original system Q by N right Q N by N in the original system will this be more or less than that? So, this is N times slower system right whereas, that is N times faster. So, therefore, this should be less than or equal to this, because the system is n times slower, but there is only one user in the system at a given point in time. The other system is n times faster, but you will have in the worst case all n users in that particular system. Right? Therefore, this should be your other end of the bound. So, therefore, combining these two fellows, we have So, for a balanced system, this is here, this is one step, right? We have some more steps here. So, we will now write the same thing with n minus 1, right? So, replace n by n minus 1. So, what do we have? d by d plus z is less than or equal to q n minus 1 by n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 into d agreed so that change then we will multiply this entire expression by n minus 1. So, what will we have? n minus 1 into d divided by d plus z is less than or equal to q n minus 1, which is less than or equal to n minus 1 into n minus 1 into d divided by n minus 1 into d plus So, here you multiply by now you add d by n. Sorry, add d and multiply. So, multiply first everything by d by m, then simply add d for this entire expression. So, what do we have? So, this is d by d by m into n minus 1 into d divided by d plus z. This is less than or equal to Right, just routine algebraic manipulations. So, multiply by d by m first everywhere, then add d to both sides. So, what do we get now? So, what is this expression finally? R of n, right. So, that is what we wanted to get to. So, for a balanced system, your R of n is given by this box, where all the, de all the demands are equal and therefore, all the q lengths are equal. So, for this system, 
is given by this expression. That is step 1. Now, we have to do two more experiments to finally come to the bounds that we want for an unbalanced system. For a balanced system, this is good enough. Okay. Then two more horrendous strips later, we will come with some better bounds. In fact, you will find that the bounds are actually really much stronger compared to what we saw before. Okay. So, I am not sure how much enthu you have for knowing those bounds, but we will anyway proceed with those bounds. But it will be useful at some point in time when somebody says here is a queuing network just give me the bounds I do not care about running this MVA and all that stuff just tell me what the bounds are right give me better bounds. In that case you can simply just run this formula in 2 seconds tell them this is the bounds and that is enough you do not really need to know the exact value for given for the given exact values are not needed just upper lower bound which is fairly close to the actual after all this computation that we do with X and right and uh, all that we do not have to do that if I can actually use this that is the reason for going through this right. We did all these calculations and finally find that it can give you a fairly narrow set of bounds, which is adequate in most cases if you are talking to your customer, right? Customer says, Tell me what will be the delay for this particular system. You are going to sell them your web, right, web processing system, some transaction processing system, and then that guy says, Okay, there are so many steps in this transaction, give me bounds on this performance. And then you do not have to go, Oh, let me let me write my Yaxim code and come, come back to you three days from now, right? <coughs> you do not have to do that, or right, right, let me check my spreadsheet to do this. MBA calculations and come back to you. No, we can take this as a shortcut and get back to you. That is the reason for going through this, right? Okay, so we will stop here, we will come back and then use these two sides of the expression to give better delays or better bounds for both R of n and then X of n.